Blankets are in such short supply that body bags are being used for warmth instead. So, Mr. President, let me be clear. Eastern Aleppo is besieged by the Syrian government. No United Nations assistance has entered in nearly four months. Food is so scarce that many people survive on one meal of rice a day, and what is available on local markets is at vastly inflated prices. At the same time, civilians are being bombed by Syrian and Russian forces, and if they survive that, they will starve tomorrow. The tactics are as obvious as they are unconscionable. Make life intolerable, make death likely. Push people from starvation to despair to surrender. Push people to leave on green buses. The leaflets which have been dropped on eastern Aleppo by Syrian and Russian aircrafts operating in that area make the intention chillingly clear. They read, and I quote, This is your last hope, dot, dot, dot. Save yourselves. If you do not leave these areas urgently, you will be annihilated. Close quote. And they end by saying, I hope I quote again, you know that everyone has given up on you. They left you alone to face your doom and nobody will give you any help. Close quote. And it is clear that the aircraft which dropped the bombs, the generals who give the orders and the politicians who have designed the strategy intend to make good on that horrific promise. And we have seen this happen numerous times already, whether in Homs, Daraya, Moadamir, Alwea, and now Eastern Aleppo. It will be the fate of those hundreds of thousands of people still trapped in besieged locations all across the country. This is not a world we can accept. All parties and their sponsors must put an end to these medieval tactics. All parties and their sponsors must grant us safe humanitarian access, sustained and non-politicized humanitarian and medical access to all in need throughout the country, to those in Aleppo and the hundreds of thousands of people trapped in the other 17 besieged locations around the country. Despite what these abhorrent leaflets say, we must demonstrate to the Syrian people that we have not given up on them, that, we are, that they are not left alone to their doom and they will not be annihilated. But throughout the country, nearly 8 million children have lost their parents, their homes, their schools. They have suffered immense emotional and physical traumas. Children in besieged eastern Aleppo were due to resume school in late September. They didn't. Instead, shell-shocked children are retrieved from rubble and left writhing in bloody clothes on dirty hospital floors. They are stuck in hideouts. They cannot play. They cannot sleep. That has become the reality for 100,000 children in eastern Aleppo. Across the country, as you all know, one in four schools has ceased to function. More than 52,000 teachers have left their jobs. Over 2 million children remain out of school and another 400,000 are at risk of dropping out as the horrors of this brutal and savage war continue unabated. Hundreds of thousands of Syrian children have become stateless. It doesn't matter that many of us are trying and would reach them if we could. Those children who are somehow just surviving, they feel abandoned by the world, abandoned to face their future alone. And what future do these children have? Illiterate, orphaned, starved and maimed? What future does a country have? when its next generation is a lost generation. These children do not have the luxury of waiting for another Geneva or Vienna or Lausanne to succeed. They need our protection now. And what happened to never again? What happened to our commitment to protect the most vulnerable, those who face mass atrocities? What happened to this council's responsibility to act in a timely and decisive manner? There's surely nothing timely nor decisive about the world's approach to Syria so far. The international community cannot fail the children of Aleppo as it did in Srebrenica, Cambodia and Rwanda. Mr. President, there is no question today about whether you, the members of this council, know what is going on. You clearly and tragically do. The question today is what, what would you do? What steps would you take to ensure people in dire need get assistance? Humanitarians stand ready to continue to deliver to any and all in need, but that's not enough. Action must be taken, make safe access possible, and for that, the violence must be stopped. It is within your power to do it. If you don't take action, there will be no Syrian peoples or Syria to save. 
that will be this council's legacy, our generation's shame. It is in your hands today to take the right path and avert this looming irreversible tragedy of our time. Thank you, Stephen O'Brien. Things aren't getting better and action needs to be taken. What can we do? Go to writetothem.com. You can put in your postcode and send an email directly to your MP from the website demanding that the violence is stopped in Syria and that we do something to help make that happen. If you want to get in touch with the UK government but you're not sure exactly what to say, have a look at amnesty.org.uk forward slash issues forward slash Syria. There's a lot of information on this website that will put you more in the picture about exactly what's been happening in the past five years. And you can click to take an action directly from the website, which will mean your voice is added, calling on Theresa May, our Prime Minister, to do something to protect the children of Aleppo.